Davis is our preseason Big East Player of the Year. He helped the Blue Jays to share of, to a share of the 2020 Big East regular season title with an average of 16.1 points per game last season. Mitch averaged 11.9 and was second in the Big East last year in three-point shooting. Mitch is also a member of the preseason All Big East second team. So welcome, guys. Just a quick reminder to keep yourself on mute. If you have a question, I already see some in the queue. Uh, please use the raise hand feature in the chat. If you're dialing in, use the chat function to let me know that you have a question and I will answer you and tell you where you are in the lineup. Uh, to make it easier for our players, for Mitch and Marcus, uh, please identify yourself and your outlet before asking your question. I will be calling on you, but a double check would be great. Um, Again, just use the chat function to communicate with me if needed. We're starting a little late, so we should be ending at 1.50. But if I have some questions in the queue, I will go a little bit over as per Rob at Creighton. All right, so let us start off. Let's go right up to Maggie Marinas. I've missed you. Ready to go over your question. Missed you too. Good to see you. <laughs> um, I guess my question for is for both guys, if you can. Um, first of all, Mitch, what happened, man? Where's the beard at? I was going to say no comment, but not really going to say no that, comment. That, that's, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, let it go. Okay. Um, I, you know, I, I just wondered what your guys' experience was like the other night um, at DJ, listening to Kyle and Josh and Rachel. Um I don't know if you were there in person or if you watched it later or if you met as a team afterwards and talked about it, but I just wondered, you know, cause Mitch, you're from Kansas, Marcus from Massachusetts, like different parts of the world, different life experiences. And I wondered what, what, what you guys took away from that conversation and how it resonated with you just in terms of like seeing people from different backgrounds kind of talk about those subjects in, in a in-depth manner the way they did. All right, Marcus, we'll go to you. Um, you know, I, you know, I took a lot from it. You know, I really, you know, respect Kyle Corver and how he, you know, what he stands for in terms of that. And, um, you know, I, I kind of relate to it. You know, I come from a, a predominantly white town, and but I went to prep school. You know, I hung out with a lot of black kids. So, you know, I've kind of seen the best of both, not the best of both worlds, but I've seen both sides of it. And, you know, what Kyle was preaching, you know, just, you know, how, you know, they were in the locker room, you know, before they uh, played the magic and he, you know, we started crying about it, you know, it just shows how much he cares. And, you know, it, you know, this whole year has been, been crazy in terms of that. And then, you know, I'm all for it, you know, what um, I'm all for what Kyle stands for. And then uh, along with what Rachel said, you know, she said a lot of great things and, you know, I, you know, it was a, it was a quick hour, you know, I was really locked in and um, that was big time. All right, Mitch. Yeah, I would agree with Marcus uh, backpacking off of that. Obviously I come from a small town in Eudora. That's, predominantly white as well, like Marcus and Kyle's background. And I've been in situations to where you can kind of see it a little bit, but at the same time, you don't really have the perspective and you don't really live that life that other people have to go through every day. So Kyle did an unbelievable job and Rachel and Josh, they did an unbelievable job just kind of talking about their background and just kind of making it real for someone who is kind of outside of that bubble, but just, hearing them and hopefully listening and getting that conversation going is just a good starting point in kind of our culture and our country today. Mac mentioned earlier that uh, in, in his session that he feels like it's brought you guys closer together just because of the nature of the conversations that you guys have had throughout this time. And I wondered if you guys could, you know, I don't know, speak on that a little bit in terms of how comfortable you guys feel in terms of, your relationships with each other and having those conversations that might not necessarily make everyone in the room comfortable, but the fact that you guys have built a long-term relationship with each other, that it's important to talk about at the same time. Go ahead, Mitch. Yeah, I think, I mean, like you said, it's, it, it, it's not necessarily uncomfortable talking about those things because obviously those issues need to be talked about, you know? So if you're uncomfortable, it's, it's kind of like, everybody has different views and everybody has different ideas about it and how to go about it because the one, the one common theme is, I mean, change needs to happen. You know, uh, we see the videos, we have people who go through the scrutinies every day in life. And when you see those things, 
that necessary that I'm not necessarily going through, then it's it's crucial just to listen to someone who is going through those things just to kind of advocate for change going forward in our country. All right, we are going to throw this to Joe Nugent from WOWT Omaha. Hey guys, uh, I'm Joe from uh, Channel 6 in Omaha, and uh, this is for both of you. So Marcus, first, um, I'm curious about this offseason. It's a, it's a six-week camp, um, no scrimmages, no exhibition games. Um, how do you guys feel like you're going to be able to keep things fresh, especially as an experienced team who's been through this before? Yeah, you know, it's definitely a different year. You know, no scrimmages and, you know, we have more practices going into this, into this season. But, um, you know, I'm not worried about that. You know, I think our coaches do a great job of preparing us. And, you know, they do a good job of not, you know, grinding us too much and, uh, and not too less. So, you know, I'm not too worried. You know, we also have a group of guys uh, who are coming back from last year and who are experienced and who are, you know, like ready to roll with uh, whatever comes at us. And, you know, I'm, I'm just looking forward to the season. All right, Ashley Leotis, I'm gonna to go to you. Hey guys, for both of you. Um, earlier, Coach kind of talked about the maturity needed in this situation as far as COVID goes and the new protocols and everything. And um, he said he's really glad he has this sense of maturity and leadership you know, with this team to help kind of lead, lead this team through this uncertain time, I guess. But how do you guys lead your team through this when really no one has ever dealt with anything like this before? You know, I would say just, you know, you know, as, as leaders of the team, just to, you know, constantly remind kids and our teammates to be smart, you know, on and off the floor, you know, don't, don't, don't put yourself at risk, but also don't put your teammate at risk. Cause say I go out and expose myself, I'm putting my, I'm putting my group of, you know, my roommates at risk of, of two weeks of quarantine and that's going to affect the season. So, you know, we know what's at stake. You know, we all take this serious and we know uh, every decision we make off the floor is going to affect somebody else on the floor. So, you know, that's our that's our take on it. And uh, yeah. All right. I'm going to go to Matt Malonsky from the CBB Review. Yeah. Thank you, Matt Majenski. Um Marcus, you know, you make it the seventh straight year that a guard has won Big East preseason player of the year. Some of the recent guys, Miles Powell, Shamori Pons, Jalen Brunson. But why are you different from those past players who've won this honor? Am I different? Um, you know, those are all great players. You know, I'm not really sure why, why I am, but um, I just know I play with a lot of great teammates and, you know, they're, you know, they, they make me look good out there. And, you know, a lot of coaches that put me – position to be successful and then I got a great family you know who who hold, who hold me down and uh you know give me good criticism and you know but also give me confidence but you know it's a mixture of all th things but it's a you know I would say this award is you know it's a it's kind of like a product of my, of my environment you know I, I got a lot of great teammates on and off the floor you know a lot of great coaches and you know a great family that supports me all right John Fanta from the Big East Digital Network Thanks, uh, Mitch. How special is it for you to see uh, Jacob Epperson you know, after some of the things that he's been through? He's gone through hurdles injury-wise and, and going through that adversity. How nice is it to see him back? And what kind of a different dimension could he maybe give this Creighton team if you know he's able to stay healthy and contribute? Yeah, it's, it's really special to see him on the floor. Um, obviously, we haven't seen him consist consistently. In the past couple of years, um, we saw flashes of his freshman year, and then we saw a lot of more, a uh, little more flashes his sophomore year. But having him back, it's just a joy to see him. You know, he's in high spirits. Uh, he's capable of doing a lot of different things, whether it's protecting the rim or putting pressure on the rim, downhill with flip ups and different lobs. Um, but just the energy he brings, and he can add that component to to our team that we haven't really seen in a while. Um, we have. That puts three bigs. I mean, we have CB and we have Ryan coming in and then now Jake coming back uh, and healthy and doing his thing. So it just kind of adds different dynamics and different ways that we can implement the bigs into our system. So sometimes we'll be able to go big some games and some games we'll be able to play small. So giving having Jake in the lineup and having those different adjustments we can go to kind of poses a lot of different a lot of different ways we can throw different bigs at different opponents. So it'll be, it'll be exciting throughout the year. And just one for Marcus, 
you know, Marcus, one of the, the key characteristics for your guys' success last year was really what Tyshawn did for you defensively. I mean, he was you know, as good of a defender in the Big East as you were going to find and one of the best in the nation. How do you try to replace that, that type of defensive tenacity? How comfortable are you as well with, with picking up an opposing team's, you know, best backcourt player and, and trying to take on that assignment, that is something that, you know, is, is a question that you guys are looking to answer because of how good Tyshawn was last year. Yeah, Tyshawn was phenomenal last year. You know, he shut a lot of guys down who, uh, who are, you know, who are all Americans. And, you know, that's a, that's a question we've got a lot this, this offseason. But, you know, I think it's a kind of a group thing. You know, I think me, my, uh, I think Mitch, I think Denzel, Dame, and Reef will all take on that responsibility, you know, as a group. You know, I don't know if we'll have one specific guy like Tyshawn, but, you know, I know, I know we all want that, uh, like, to be able to guard, you know, their best player. You know, I'm, I'm not worried about that. You know, I, I think, you know, Coach will have a plan for us, and all we got to do is follow that. Thanks. Thank you, John. We are going to go to John Niatawa, the Omaha World Herald. Yeah, Marcus, you, you told us maybe two months ago that things are just different on the day-to-day, -day, you know, just in terms of, like, not being able to stop by the facility in between classes or uh, – you know, just spend 30 minutes with a coach or something. Has it changed or, or like, I guess how different is the day to day now versus, you know, a year ago? Yeah. You know, it's definitely different. You know, the gym access is, you know, it, it's, it's went up since we've been here, you know, after, you know, phase two, you know, we're allowed to get in the gym on our own. And as long as someone's here to, you know, check us in, check our temperature and stuff like that, you know, but, um, you know, I think it's, you know, worked well. I mean, you know, if anything, I mean, uh, we can all look at this as a good thing and, you know, just make sure, you know, our bodies are good because we know the, we know the, um, the preseason is, is long and, you know, we don't want to get too much in the gym, too much time in the gym. So, you know, if anything, just have a positive perspective on it and uh, just go from there. And then I had a question for Mitch. This is probably a dumb question. So sorry about it, Mitch, but like you, you, you you're always looking to improve. I know, but like we've seen you in the gym and, and how, how good of a shooter you are. How, how do you get better? as a shooter? Like, are there different things that you do to, to work on that aspect of your game? Because you're already, you know, at the top at upper echelon in that aspect. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of different things you can do uh, just to build consistency. Um, one thing that I'm really focusing on now in the offseason uh, is just trying to come off screens quicker and get into a shot, whether my hips are squared up or not, and then just figure it out in the air. Um, if you watch guys like Duncan Robinson, I mean, he came from, came from nowhere, and then Coach Bolster put that confidence in him that hey you're the, you have the ability to do this stuff and he puts him in actions a lot like Mac does with me that gives me the freedom to play a style of basketball that's that that benefits me and if I can just execute those those different footwork deals or those different just getting my body squared up to the rim when I'm flying 100 mile an hour off a screen then that'll make me more effective and harder to guard so I'm trying to implement those things and just be quicker with my release and quicker with my feet and set up. All right, thank you, John. I am going to throw it now to Danny Barletta of the UConn Daily Campus. Yeah, yeah. This one's for uh, from Marcus. I just wanted to get your thoughts on um, on UConn returning to the Big East because uh, you know you're from New England. I'm sure you're very familiar with UConn. So, I just, uh, what are your thoughts on getting to play them a couple of times a year now? Yeah, I think it's a great addition. You know, UConn is you know a, a great program. They they were they were in the Big East uh, a couple of years ago. You know, I grew up watching them. I grew up watching Kemba. You know. My older brother went to Syracuse and he would go down to Connecticut, you know, once a year and play them. And I, you know, I went to a game. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's awesome. You know, they're, they're a great program. They're, uh, they got a lot of great players. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited for the battles, you know, for sure. All right. Thank you. Jared Kotler from the UConn score. Hey guys. Uh, in doing some podcasts and reporting around uh, UConn's return to the Big East, with you guys being a new team for UConn, coaches, players, everyone seems to rank Creighton as one of the toughest places to play in the Big East on the road. What makes your home court environment so special, uh, especially for a team that hasn't experienced it before? I'll take it, Marcus. Um, I would say just the energy and the atmosphere that the, that the fans create. Um, our arena is pretty big. Uh, you can get 18 plus thousand in there. And when you have 14 and a half thousand or so season ticket holders that bring it every night and are really committed to and like dedicated and kind of have that, that relationship with us, then it just brings a different dynamic 
to the arena. And our students do a good job when they doing Big East play uh, of bringing energy and just kind of staying excited. So with that, when you have 18,000 people in the brand of basketball we play, I mean, we can score in bunches. So when you start to see some exciting and amazing plays happen, the, the crowd just gets into it and they just start, we feed off that and, and they feed off our energy. So it, it, it's a pretty cool dynamic inside the arena. Marcus, do you want to take that also? You know, I, I would just piggyback off what Mitch said. You know, we have a, I think we have the best uh, fan section, fans in the, in, 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 uh, in the country and, you know, they bring it every game and, you know, without them, you know, we wouldn't be as successful as last year. So, you know, they're huge for us and I'm, and I'm excited to, to see them. If it happens. All right. Oh, sorry, Marcus. Now you're good. All right. We are going to go to Megan Caffrey from the Big East Digital Network. After that, I have time for one or two more. If not. Oh, Fanta. All right. Megan, then John Fanta. And then we'll call it an afternoon. All right, Megan. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, Mitch, this one's for you because you mentioned having three bigs. Coach alluded to that earlier, saying he's hoping that you guys have a three-headed monster with that. When you're looking at Ryan specifically as a freshman, what excites you about him with what he's bringing to the team and how quickly he's been catching on to things? Yeah, the biggest thing with Ryan is just the fact that he's coachable. Um, he's He'll listen to you. Whatever you have to say, he'll, he'll lock in and and really take what you're saying, um, both on offensively, uh, on offense and defense. Um, plus, with him, he has really good hands. So, I mean, when he rolls out of pick and rolls, and you throw it up to the rim, he'll go get it. He'll catch it. And then he has a good, like if you give it to him on the low block, he has really good footwork and can score with both hands. So, when you have a guy that puts pressure on the rim, it can kind of it stops teams from from doubling. And then if he does double, he has he has a good sense of where people are and his uh his passing ability is really is really good and he can kick it out to us and and put defenses in those closeout situations and and we can take advantage of that so i'm really excited about him but my favorite thing about him is the fact that he's just coachable all right thank you megan thanks mitch all right john fanta close us out marcus uh obviously heading into this season you know that there's high expectations here and with that, you know, I, I know that you've got that drive and, and you've always talked about how driven you are. The, the thing that Creighton basketball has been looking to do is make that NCAA tournament run. You know, I'm curious, how much is it it's discussed amongst your locker room, amongst yourselves, and just how much do you relish the idea that you, Mitch, can be at the forefront of taking Creighton, you know, on some sort of a run in March Madness? Yeah, you know, that's the goal for this year. The goal is to go as far as possible, win as many games as possible. You know, we know, you know, last season was cut short for us. You know, we ended on a great note, you know, but, you know, with COVID, you know, it kind of ruined everything. But going into this year, you know, that's our mindset is the, you know, we have unfinished business. And, uh, you know, we're excited to take that challenge on, you know, one day at a time, one practice at a time, and you know, one game at a time. So that's our mindset going in. And, you know, we're not going to, you know, think about March right now. We're just going to think about, you know, this practice, you know, let's get better today. You know, let's have let's let's have fun. Let's compete, and then you know, just just add, add those days up, and then you know, before you know it, it'll be March, and you know, we'll be ready. Thanks. Thank you, John. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Mitch. Thanks to the media. Uh, we are concluding Zoom Room Two and Media Day here. So, thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of the day, and we'll see you out there on the court.